For today's lesson, are big numbers really just a bunch of little numbers looking for some company? Do numbers know their place in life? Is expanded notation what happens to standard notation after Thanksgiving dinner? All this and more on today's Math, Math Review. Hi, and welcome to Math Review. My name is Miss Rosa. And as always, I'm Professor Jay. And today, we're going to learn one of the great tricks to tricky math breaking down big numbers into easy to manage chunks. Hey, something smells good. That's probably Einstein. Einstein? Yeah, Einstein is my guinea pig. He, he, he used to, you know, help me out with my experiments. Used to. Let's just say that the attempt to make an electric powered hamster wheel didn't turn out too well. Ew. It's all part of expanding scientific horizons, I'm afraid. Maybe we should stick with expanding numbers instead. You're no doubt referring to expanded notation. That's right. Hmm. And before our audience tunes out, maybe we should explain what that means. Oh, certainly. Well, you see, when you write down a number, that's standard notation. Um, it's just a fancy term for the regular way you, you write out a number. So, if you wanted to write out 239, you'd write it like this. 239. It's so easy, it seems silly to explain. But what's not silly is things aren't always as they seem. <laughs> that conspiracy is all around us. And that standard notation is not the only way to write down a number. And that's where expanded notation comes in. Expanded notation is when you take a large number and write down all the individual pieces that make up that number. A large number like, say, 4,752. Why that one? <laughs> That's my favorite. That's odd. Uh, actually, it's even. OK, let's visualize how this works. If we take each number in 4,752 and replace the numbers after it with zeros, and then lay all those out, we can break any large number down into its pieces. So now we have 4,750 and 2. If you add all those pieces together, you have your original number again. So, you can see that however you write it out, it all equals the same thing. Expanded notation just gives your brain a way to separate a big number and split it into easier to manage pieces. All of this is a great illustration of an equation. Writing down the same number on either side of an equal sign. Just written a different way. Ultimately, no matter how complex the equation, that's really all you're looking at, is, is a number written different ways. Let's kick it up a notch. <laughs> if you combine expanded notation with the area method, you get what's called area multiplication. Let's take an easier problem, 3 times 36. Using expanded notation, we know that 36 can be written as 30 plus 6. Now let's create our grid. To simplify it a bit, let's merge those smaller shapes. OK, now since we're multiplying by 3, let's make three rows of each. Let's count the 30s first, 30, 60, 90, put that at the bottom. Now count the 6s, 6, 12, 18, put that at the bottom. Move the plus sign down and add them up. There you have it. 36 times 3 is 108, and that is area multiplication. Hmm. Well, that's it for today's math review. We'll work on actually multiplying these big numbers later, but for now, you've got the skills to break down big numbers and visualize them with the area method, and that's Math Review. The spot where each individual number sits in a big number is called its place value. Like setting places at a dinner table, each number sits in an assigned spot. Let's take Professor Jay's favorite number. 4,752. The 4 is sitting in the thousands column, so its place value is 1,000. Since a 4 is there, that means there are 4 thousands. Get it? 4,000? Same goes for the 7. It's in the hundreds column. The 5 is in the tens column, and the 2, well, that's in the ones column. It's just what it is. Thinking about each number's place value can help you think about how to break it up. Place values. It's what's for dinner. Cool.